everybody, today we're going to be making the heart bubble square um, designed by Lisa from Cute Crochet Makes for her Unicorn Dreams blanket crochet along. Now the heart bubbles square that is in Lisa's pattern, which is free to download as a PDF from her website. I will link to that in the description box below. She uses double knit yarn and a four millimeter crochet hook. Now the majority of this square is made up in white, which is not a friend of the camera. So for my sort of demo heart bubble square, I'm going to be using um, the chunky version of the yarn in completely different, quite ugly, contrasting colours. And I'm also going to use a six and a half millimeter crochet hook. Now this is purely so you can see exactly how this bubble square is made up. So the list of all these colours and the sequence order, which you can see in this square here, is all listed on Lisa's website. So please do pop on over there and download her PDF where it gives you really, really clear guidelines with regards to which colours to use in which rows. As always, there are timestamps in the description box below. If you click that little arrow and expand it, it will give you timestamps to jump to each individual row. So you can cut out anything you don't need and just go straight to the row that you need help with if you're not following along stitch for stitch and you're just stuck on one particular bit, then that's super handy to have those in the description box below. Also, if it's the first time that you've been to my channel, hello, welcome. It would be amazing if you could just take a moment to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. If you're following Lisa's crochet along, um, you are going to need 25 of these squares. Now for her blanket, she does a different color border, picks one of these colors that she's used in the heart. I just went with green for this particular one. But if you're following her actual, you're making a full blanket, you're gonna need 25 of these bad boys. So you better get cracking. All right, without further ado, let's begin with my demo square in Big Fat Chunky Yarn. So you can see exactly how you make the heart bubble square by Lisa from Cute Crochet Makes. So with my Big Fat Chunky Yarn and my Big Fat Chunky Hook, I'm gonna end up with quite an ugly square, but hopefully you guys will be able to clearly see how the heart bubble square is made. For all the color sequences for the actual rainbow version, it's all listed over on Lisa's website. So please do go over there and download the PDF. Um, her written pattern actually has a really handy chart in it as well. So I thoroughly recommend popping over there. So to begin, we're gonna start with a slip knot on our hooks. And you are going to chain 24. Now keep this chain a little bit looser than you usually would because you don't want when we work back into it for it to tighten up at the bottom. So you go ahead and chain 24. Now this loop doesn't count as anything. It's not a chain until you've yarned over and pulled through. So I've got my 24 chains here. So now for row two, into the second chain from your hook. So this loop on your hook does not count as anything. You're counting these chains that are coming down from the bottom of the hook. So not into this first one, into this second one, you're going to put a single crochet. So I'm sort of assuming you guys already know the stitches. If you don't, I will link to video tutorials on how to do all of them in the description box below. So you've got your first single crochet and you are going to go ahead and put a single crochet into every chain all the way along. And by the end of row two, you will have 23 stitches. Okay, so you will have, by the end of row two, 23 single crochets in total. Now is the time, whilst I sort out my yarn over here, to double check your stitch count. You want to make sure that when you turn it up like this, 
when you count your little v's that you have 23 of them if you haven't rewind the video and start again but this is the magic number 23 if you haven't got 23 stitches your heart bobble your sort of heart bobbly bit in the middle is going to be off center so it's super important to just double check before we go any further that you have 23 stitches for row two for row three you're going to chain one and turn now that chain one does not count as a stitch it is just your churn turning chain now just like before going immediately into this very first stitch from where you just that's my chain one into this stitch here you're going to pop a single crochet in every stitch along and by the end of row three again you will have 23 stitches Don't forget, you will have a stitch potentially hiding at the end. So by the end of this row, you will have 23 single crochet. It also, for something like mine, will start to be curling a little tiny bit. But don't worry about that. That all gets sorted out right at the end. <laughs> row four is going to be an exact repeat of what we have just done. So chain one, which does not count as a stitch, turn your work and pop a single crochet into every stitch along and you will have 23 stitches by the end of row four. Okay, row five, now this is the first row which has a bobble stitch so I will do this entire row with you so we can go nice and slowly so I can show you exactly how to do the bobbles and how to change color so to start row five chain one and turn your work now row five starts with 11 single crochet now on the 11th single crochet that is when we change color so i'm going to go ahead and crochet 10 of them and then you can catch up get your 10 done too and meet me when you are ready to do your 11th single crochet of this row Okay, so I've just done 10 single crochet and now I'm about to start my 11th. So this is a stitch where we change color, the stitch before where the bobble is going to go. So insert your hook as if you're doing a normal single crochet. And when you have two loops on your hook, you want to drop this sort of mustard color and bring in your bobble color. Okay, so this sort of sage color is going to be the color of my first bobble you've got two loops of the mustard on your hook so to finish this stitch leave yourself a bit of a tail yarn over and pull through the two loops of that single crochet now under normal circumstances you would leave your tail hanging at the back of the work so everything's always at the back of the work however Bobble stitches are always crocheted on the back side of the work. So the row we are working on at the moment, because we're doing a bobble, will be the wrong side of your work. So that tail, just to make your life a fraction easier for weaving in ends later, bring it to the front just so you can put your thumb on it to keep the loop tense, but also so that this is just already at the back, so it's not going to ruin how the front looks when you try and weave in your ends later on. It's just a tiny little hint for you now to save yourself <laughs> a lot of grief later on. So this is the back of the work or will be in the finished square. 
So you've got your sage color sort of pulled through your loops and you're ready to do your bobble stitch. Now the other thing you want to do is this mustard color coming from that single crochet, pull it down so it's nice and neat in line with your other single crochet stitches. And I'm going to be working my bobble into this next single crochet stitch, but I'm also gonna be sandwiching this mustard yellow color in with it as well. So when I work this stitch, let me just get that green out of the way, I'm gonna be putting my hook underneath the Vs of this next stitch and I'm gonna be sandwiching in, and crocheting over this mustard yarn. I haven't cut it, it's still attached. I'm just gonna be sandwiching that one in between as well. So, for your bobble stitch, yarn over, go into the next stitch. See, I'm sandwiching that in there too. Pull your yarn back through, yarn over, pull through two, and then stop. So you've got a half finished double crochet hanging from your hook. So you're gonna ignore those two loops and you're gonna make another so yarn over, go back into that exact same stitch, yarn over at the back, come through, yarn over and pull through two, and then stop. So you've now got two half finished double crochet stitches hanging from your hook. The aim is to have four of these all in the same stitch. So yarn over, go into that stitch, catch the yarn at the back, come through, yarn over, pull through two, stop and then one more time yarn over go into that same stitch come back through yarn over pull through two now if this little green loop is getting a bit loose don't worry because you'll sort that out when you weave this end in afterwards so you should have four half finished double crochets hanging from your hook and five loops on your hook now we're only doing one bobble so we need to switch back to using the mustard yarn for the next stitch otherwise you're going to have a green stitch here so pop your work down for just one second grab your scissors cut your green yarn but again leave a decent tail so you can weave it in you don't want this all unraveling at the other end and then what i do is just lift this tail so it joins its little friend here at the front of the work which will become the back of the work. <laughs> and with this mustard tail, yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook. Then you are immediately going to place a single crochet into the next stitch and indeed for the remainder of the row. So you will have 11 single crochet by the end of this row. So you just go ahead and straight away put a single crochet in the next stitch. Now that act of pulling the tall stitches down forces this bobble to pop out at the front. So you can see, once you've weaved it all in, if I rotate it around, you've got a bobble sticking at the front of the work because you've sort of pulled it down and forced it out. So that's my first single crochet and I need 10 more. So just single crochet to the end of the row and you'll have a total of 11 single crochet for this little section. So at the end of row five, you will have 23 stitches. So you'll have 22 single crochets and then this bobble in the middle and you'll have the two tails hanging here. So essentially, once you've done the entire square, all your tails are at the back. So if I turn it over, you'll see you've got a bobble stitch poking out the front. For row six, chain one and turn. And for this row, we're going to go back to just single crochet rows. So a single crochet in every stitch all the way along. So you'll have 23 stitches. Now, when you get to your bobble stitch, 
you're going to be going into this looped V here. And that is the end of row six. And now let's begin row seven. Now row seven has three bobble stitches in it. So chain one, turn your work. Now this time you're going to start with nine single crochet and it is on single crochet number nine that we're going to change color. So do your first eight as usual. So I've got eight of my nine single crochets done. And then on my ninth single crochet, I'm going to change color. So get to the point where you have two loops on your hook and then complete your stitch with your new color. I'm just gonna pull that one through. And remember to keep the tails facing you because this will be the wrong side of your work. I'm just going to pull my tail out of the way slightly. Now I'm going to sandwich my mustard yarn just like we did before. It's called floating or carrying your yarn. So just make sure that you've got nice even tension for the beginning of this stitch. And we're going to do a bobble stitch immediately into this single crochet here. Now the bobble stitch is four double crochets sort of half finished. So I've done one. So you always yarn over, pull through two and then stop. So I've got my second one. Stop. One, two, three. And one more. So for each of your bobble stitches, you're going to have four half finished double crochets hanging from your hook and five loops in total. Now, pull that mustard yarn just a little to get the tension correct before you move on. Now, we are going to float this green yarn too. So it starts to get a bit messy back here but I will go nice and slowly and hopefully you can clearly see what I'm doing especially if I move all the excess yarn out of the way. So we're going to be floating this green so bring it just to the front here and just put your thumb on it for one moment so it's out of your way so you can concentrate on one strand at a time and yarn over and pull through to finish your bobble stitch with the mustard yarn and pulling it through like so. Now, this tail here, I'm going to float and we're going to sandwich exactly the same way as we've done with the mustard. Now we're gonna secure this down with a single crochet. However, the bobbles are set one single crochet apart. So our second bobble stitch is going to go immediately in here. So we have to do quite a lot of color changing. So put your hook in as if you're doing a single crochet. Remember to sandwich this green this time. So it's sandwiching the green yarn. Come through with the mustard. You've got two loops on your hook. But because the very next stitch is a bobble stitch, you're going to drop the mustard and switch back to the green to finish that single crochet stitch. Use the mustard to pull that back down. Then you're going to put a bobble stitch in this very next single crochet and sandwich the mustard this time. Now, if at any point I am going too fast or you're a little bit unsure, there are little three dots in the top right corner of this video, which you can slow down the speed. So you can make me sound like I'm drunk, but it will slow the footage right down into sort of slow motion so you can really see what I'm doing. So I'm dropping the mustard and I'm gonna sandwich that one. 
and I'm going to go ahead and do my next bobble stitch. So I've got my five loops on my hook and again we're going to be switching back to the mustard colour so just bring that so it's out of your way, yarn over, pull through with the mustard through your bobble, sandwich this green yarn in the next stitch because we've got two bobbles and we need one more. So insert into the next stitch Yarn over, pull through, two loops, and then complete your single crochet with this green strand. So yarn over with that one and pull it through. Then, <laughs> we're nearly there, then we have one more bobble to complete. So you're going to put the bobble into the next stitch here, sandwiching the mustard. So just as you have been, yarn over, go in, come back through, yarn over, pull through two, stop, do that. So you have four half finished double crochets hanging from your hook. Then bring this out of the way and yarn over with the mustard. As I yarn over, I'm giving it a gentle tug to pull that stitch down slightly. So yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook. Now that is your three bobble stitches complete. So you are now free to trim your green with your scissors. Leave yourself a decent tail so you can weave it in afterwards. And then to finish row seven, you're going to end with just nine single crochet, all in the mustard color. Okay, so you've got this mess happening at the back with all these tails, but you've got nice, neat bobbles popping out the front, secured with a single crochet in between. Oh, showing you upside down. Row eight, chain one, turn your work, and put a single crochet in every stitch all the way along and you will have 23 single crochets at the end of this row. Okay, at this point, it's all starting to get a wee bit messy on the back. So it's completely optional, but I'm just going to go ahead and pop a stitch marker in this loop here. And I'm going to grab a large eye darning needle and I'm just going to weave in these ends because if nothing else, it'll be a bit cleaner on the back for you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly weave in these strands. Okay, so I have been a bit rough and ready. I started off carefully, and then I sort of got a bit rough and ready with my weaving in, so you make sure you take nice care when doing yours. Now, the back of your work will be flat, if you turn it around, you'll have your nice neat bobbles popping out the front. Now, if they're not protruding enough, I'm just giving them a little push from behind to make them really pop. Okay, row nine, chain one and turn. Now for this row, we will have five bobble stitches worked along. So there's going to be a lot of floating and color changing of yarn. Again, I will do this section with you, but I'm gonna just start speeding up on my bobbles so that this video isn't 17 hours <laughs> long. 
<laughs> as I said before, you can slow the speed of the video with the little dots up in the corner. So row nine, we are going to start with seven single crochet and we're going to change color on the seventh. So that's my sixth single crochet. So on number seven, I'm going to change color. So I'm bringing in my sage again, yarn over and complete the stitch. Bobble stitch in the very next one. Now for all of this, I'm gonna be sandwiching my tails as I change color, just as I did on this row here, I'm gonna be sandwiching them for each stitch. So bobble stitch, into the very next single crochet. Yarn over with mustard, or in your case, white. Single crochet, but change color on that single crochet. Bobble, yarn over with your next colour. Single crochet. Change colour on that single crochet. So you've now got two bobbles, two single crochet. You need five bobbles in total. So if you want to speed up and go ahead and not go through the next three with me, you can. You will have five bobble stitches and then you don't need to change colour on the very last one. But for those of you following along, Bobble. <laughs> Change color to complete your bobble stitch. Single crochet, but change color. On that final pull through. Bobble. Change color to your pull through. You've got four bobbles, so we need one more. So it's single crochet in the next stitch and change color. Bobble. Oh, my yarn is caught. What are you caught on? Yarn over with your new colour and when you have five bobble stitches you can cut the green or whatever colour it is that you happen to be doing your bobbles in. And then complete your row with single crochet and there should be seven to complete this row. So seven single crochet. To finish. Now you can see I wasn't particularly neat <laughs> with pulling down so just take a little bit of care to pull these down with your next yarn over. I was neat on these not so much on these ones. Row 10, chain one, turn and single crochet in every stitch all the way along. You will have 23 single crochets by the end of this 
row. Row 11, chain one and turn. Now for row 11, we're going to have seven bobble stitches. So start with five single crochet and change color on that fifth one. So on my fifth, I'm going to bring in my new color. So just like before, bobble stitch, change color, single crochet, change color, all the way along, and you will have seven bobbles and you don't need to draw through the green, you can cut it at the end of your seventh bobble. Don't forget to float your yarn. So bobble, single crochet, bobble, single crochet, all the way along till you have seven bobbles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is my seventh bobble. So I can go ahead and cut that tail of the green. Then you're going to end with five single crochet to complete the row. Row 12, chain one, turn, single crochet in each stitch along, you'll have 23 stitches. So hopefully you have something that looks a lot like this. Obviously yours will be white with beautiful pastel colors. <laughs> Ready for row 13. Chain one and turn. Now for this row, you're going to work nine bobbles. So just like you've been doing with the color changing as you go, for this, you want nine bobble stitches obviously with single crochets in between. So you start with three single crochet and change color on single crochet number three. So just like before, only this time we're going to have nine bubble stitches.
So I'm just finishing bubble number nine. Yarn through. Then you're going to end with three single crochet. I'm going to trim my end here. See how it all wraps around each other with all those color changes. So end with three single crochet. Row 14, chain one, turn, and a single crochet in every single one of your stitches all the way along, and you will have 23 stitches in total. So rows 15 and 16 are a repeat of the last two rows that we've just done. So for rows 15 and 16, you're going to chain one, start with three single crochet, change color in that third, and you're going to do nine bobble stitches all the way along and end on three single crochet. Then you're going to chain one, turn and put a single crochet in every stitch all the way along. So you go ahead and repeat the last two rows and I will meet you back here in just a moment. Okay, by the end of row 16, you should have something that looks a lot like this. Now, if you are following the color palette of the, um, oh, I'm running a scrap of yarn. If you're following the color palette for the Unicorn Dreams Blanket Cow, um, you will have reached this sort of apricot row here and you'll have a row of white single crochet above. So we are very nearly there. The next row we're going to do is this little pink row here. All right, so row 17. As always, chain one and turn. Now we're gonna start with five single crochet and you're going to change color on the fifth of those stitches. Now you're going to do three bobble stitches with single crochets in between. So on your third and final bobble, change color and you're free to cut the yarn, this sort of blue yarn, from this bobble stitch here. So at the end of this third bobble, we're going to do three single crochet. And you're going to change color on the third. <laughs> So you have five single crochet, bobble, single crochet, bobble, single crochet, bobble, three single crochet. Now you need three bobble stitches again with single crochets in between. Once you have your three bobble stitches, you can cut your yarn for the colored bobble. And you're going to end with five single crochet.
row 18, chain one, turn, single crochet in every stitch all the way along and you will have 23 stitches. Okay, row 19, the last of the bobble stitch rows. Chain one and turn. And you're going to start with seven single crochet, but change color on that seventh single crochet. So this is my seventh single crochet. Bring in my different color. And you're going to put one bobble stitch, just one, into the next stitch. Draw through with your other color, and then you're, oh, got that on the wrong side. Draw through with your other color. You're free to cut your bobble tail. Then you are going to crochet seven single crochet, and again, change color on the seventh. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and on seven, change color. One bobble stitch into the next single crochet. Draw through with your other color, cut your yarn, do a mini little happy dance inside that that's the last bobble stitch you have to do. Hooray! And then finish with seven single crochet. So all your bobbles should line up those top two and line with the middle of the third coming down. Now for rows 20, 21, 22 and 23, you're going to do single crochet rows. So chain one, turn, 23 single crochet all the way along, chain one, turn, 23 single crochet all the way back, again, chain one, turn, 23 single crochet, chain one, turn, 23 single crochet. So we need four rows of single crochet back and forth. You go ahead, do that, and I will meet you back here in just a second. So I'm just finishing up row 23. I'm doing my last single crochet. Then to finish off, chain one, cut your yarn, leaving a nice generous tail that you can weave in afterwards. Pull that all the way through, tighten that chain one, and turn your work. Now we are going to begin this green border section. Again, I will use a contrasting color. Now, don't worry too much. Single crochet squares are a bit of a pain for curling at the best of times, let alone when you've shoved in a whole load of big old fat bobble stitches. So if you've got slight curling like I have here, don't worry too much. We're going to sort it with a border and inevitably your square can be blocked at the end. So go ahead and grab your border colour yarn and we can begin the final rounds for the edging. Okay, for the border, grab your 
colour that you're choosing. I'm just going to go ahead and use the same sagey green because it gives quite good contrast with the stitches. Have your work facing the right side, so with the bubbles facing you and facing upwards, so not this side with oh, the horror side with all the ends, this side with the heart bubbles. Pop a slip knot into your yarn and pop your hook through the very first stitch. So this here is our chain one and this is the last single crochet we did of round 23. So pop your hook underneath that, so ignore your chain one, pop your hook underneath that stitch. Put the slip knot on your hook Pull it tight and bring it through. Okay, so into this same stitch, you're going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch. You're going to put a single crochet, chain one, and then what I do is pop a stitch marker just around that chain one. I'm just sort of hooking onto that because it's very easy to miss later on. And then put another single crochet into that same stitch, which forms your first corner. So you can see it's really difficult to see the sort of chain one space in between these two stitches. So having a stitch marker here is particularly handy. Now, for all these border stitches, you want to try and be as loose as possible because you don't want this center heart to pucker up, which is what it's going to want to do. Now, if you find that's happening, you can either go up a hook size by half a mil or a mil, or just try and keep your stitches as loose as possible. As I said before, blocking these will eliminate a lot of errors, but just be mindful to keep your stitches nice and loose for round on this border. So you're going to put a single crochet into every stitch along. And then in your very final stitch, you're going to put one single crochet, chain one, mark that chain one space, and a single crochet all into that same stitch. So you will have, excluding this stitch before your chain one, 23 stitches, a chain one, and a single crochet on either side. Right, so my very last stitch here, one single crochet, chain one, mark that sort of chain one space, as it were. I'm literally just clipping my stitch marker into the void, and then a single crochet into the same stitch. So as I said, you should have 23 stitches across the top and a chain one single crochet on both sides. Okay, for the sides, you're going to single crochet one stitch into each row. Now I'm going to show you quite carefully where I'm putting mine. I'm going to be quite exaggerated. You take a little bit more time than I am. So I'm, this is my current stitch. I'm just going to go into each stitch as I go down. If you're unsure, we want to have a total of 23 stitches on this side edge. So if you're unsure where to place them, you can look and count before you go ahead and place your stitches.
and then so you've crocheted you've got your one stitch here that you'd already done on the corner so that's one you've crocheted another 21 stitches down the side so that brings the total to 22 and then in this very final you're sort of rotating this sort of beginning and end section right by your slip knot of your chain in here you're going to put one single crochet which brings your side total to 23 chain one mark that chain one space and then put a single crochet into that exact same stitch sort of chain <laughs> section so you've got 23 stitches if you ignore this very first one 23 stitches along the top chain one 23 stitches along the side chain one and now we want to have 23 stitches along the bottom So your 23rd stitch goes in the bottom here. So you've got 23 stitches all the way along after your chain one. So when you've got 23, chain one, mark it. Pop a single crochet into that exact same place. And then just like over here, you're going to evenly crochet all the way up and then including this first single crochet you did and this one you've just done you will have a total of 23. When you have got all your stitches, so you'll have crocheted 22 at the side, you're going to join with a slip stitch to this very first single crochet, not this chain one, the first single crochet that you did for this round. Okay, for round two, chain one and pop a single crochet in the same stitch that you just chained from and then into your chain one space this is why the markers as annoying and noisy as they are when they bang against the table they are super handy for identifying that chain one space in this chain one space you are going to put two single crochet chain one two single crochet now it might be quite handy to hang on to these stitch markers so I'll go ahead and into this chain one tiny tiny space two single crochet chain one mark that chain one and two more single crochet You're going to put a single crochet into every single crochet stitch and in the chain one spaces, two single crochet, chain one, two single crochet. Now just watch out that you're not covering that very first stitch with your corners. So shunt them around a little bit. You go ahead and do all four corners, single crochet in every stitch, two single crochet, chain one, two single crochet in your chain one space. From the round below that you marked and it might make sense to go ahead and mark your new chain one spaces okay so i've just finished round two and to finish you're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet so you can count back from your marked corner space one two three and that's the one we're going to join to. Now, for the third and final round of your heart bobble square, which is that way around, chain one, single crochet, and you're going to put a single crochet 
just like before in every single stitch all the way around but this time in the corners in this chain one space that hopefully you've been marking because you can see how difficult it is to lose or how easy it is to lose I should say in your chain one space you are going to put one single crochet chain one one single crochet you don't need to mark them this time so just as before single crochet into every stitch all around one single crochet chain one one single crochet into the corners So to finish your round, just like before, slip stitch to that first single crochet. Now that's the last of the single crochet rounds. So the way I finish off is chain one, cut your yarn, pull it up through, and then you can weave this in in a moment. Now let me just move things out of the way. Okay, so I've pulled my camera back out a little bit so you can see more um, what my square is wanting to do at this point. If I just sort of let it naturally lie without fiddling with it, you can see it's starting to curl in a little bit. It's got a bit of a wonk going on over here. Now, do not panic. I had a very similar issue with my um, white one here. Um, you can only be so careful with your tension. Things happen. You get distracted life happens it's not always perfect so what you can do is for starters smooth it out <laughs> that instantly fixes a whole multitude of errors now I have mentioned several times throughout this mammoth video about blocking your projects in fact I mention it quite often in a lot of my videos about blocking and I often get asked what is blocking so very 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 briefly to touch on blocking because this will be the one square that potentially you do want to sort of pin out and have right, maintain a sort of a nice square shape especially as for Lisa's blanket she uses 25 of these bobble ones so you want them to look good a really easy simple way to block is to use either like a foam play mat um, I have actually I've got I've got some here <laughs> mine are a bit scratched up but like a play mat um, you can see my amount of times I've pinned stuff to this bad boy <laughs> so I've got into locking sort of play foam mats you don't need anything special um, sometimes when I'm blocking a really large object and my foam mats just aren't enough I pin straight to my carpet because <laughs> just that kind of rebel but basically what you want to do is get something that you can stick pins into that is a safe so I would say for instance bring this ugly mat thing in I would get some uh, steel pins and you can buy proper blocking pins but just as long as pins that won't go rusty so you want sort of stainless steel glass head perhaps so have a look to make sure you're not getting really cheap ones because you don't want rusty pins but essentially what you would do is you would pull it into shape and you would put little pins all the way along right I've got some pins in my crochet donut over here these are not really for blocking but to give you a vague idea I just sort of stick pins like so all the way along and you pin it into the perfect square shape and then you can spritz it lightly with some water and leave it to dry or you can get some steam on it I've got a little handheld steamer or you can use your iron with a puff of steam but do not touch your yarn with the hot iron. Don't. The Whoa. Steady on there. You'll melt it. Just the puff of steam. But however you like to block your projects, everyone's got a preferred method. This is just a really, really brief touch upon for all the people that have been asking, what is blocking? And essentially it's pin, get your item lightly damp, be it fresh out of the washing machine or hand washed or pinned out and then spritzed with water to get it damp. You pin it into shape and then you let it dry so you can see even just with me fiddling it it's instantly a lot more straight and I've only got two little pins there so 
that is a really brief overview of blocking. Um, I will do a comprehensive video on it one of these days. However, th that's kind of how you're going to fix any issues you have with the heart bobble in particular, because it does want to sort of these fat bobbles in the middle sort of want to come up and these edges sort of want to curve around. So if you want a nice, flat, perfect bobble square, this is how you can achieve it should needs be now this one um i don't think i even properly blocked it i think i pinned it out with the intention of getting it wet and yeah i haven't got time to wait for it to dry <laughs> you people need your videos and i'm trying to go as fast as i can so this is literally just been pinned and then removed i think i pinned it overnight that's it so yeah i hope this bobble square works for you 23 is the number that you need. If any of your bobbles are out of kilter, check your stitch count. If your sort of border section is warping, check your tension or pin it out afterwards. But either way, whatever you go for, I hope you have fun making them because they are absolutely beautiful. My sample, not so much. <laughs> this one, really pretty <laughs> so yeah that's it happy crocheting